you very much for this uh, kind of introduction. Uh, and uh, I'd like, uh, we would like to thank you for this extraordinary opportunity to present our common works concerning uh, the language of the uh, Hussite discourse. Uh, we are at the very beginning. And uh, so, but, but uh, because we are moving within uh, the uh, framework of workshop, I think it is the uh, right place to present uh, the beginnings of uh, one's uh, uh, enterprise. Uh, our paper takes up the discussion on nomenclature used to describe the Hussite movement in the 15th century source text. Abel Kras distinguishes three main references with respect to which Polish ecclesiastical courts, when making accusations of the dissemination of the Hussite beliefs, used to name the Hussite supporters. These were adjectives and nouns recalling either the name of the Hussites, Husiticus and Hussitae, for example, Secta Husitarum, Secta Husitica, or the name of Bohemian people, Secta Bohemica, Secta Bohemorum, or Hus himself, Secta Hus. What, we'll, what we will focus in this paper on are, according to the distinction proposed by Kras, the appellations on the second group, namely these making reference to the name of Bohemian people and their land. The latest contribution to the discussion on the appellations given to the Hussites was provided by Pavel Sokup, who basically discussed the diminishing popularity starting of the third decade of the 15th century of the appellation Viclefistai, but who also made on this occasion important remarks about the terms making reference to the name of Bohemia and Bohemian people, such as heretici in Bohemia, Bohemi heretici. Sokup claims that the appellations of this type were used as neutral technical terms with objective to situate the Hussite heresy geographically. He reminds, in addition, that after the Council of Badr, or rather, let's say, after the Compacts of Badr, it was neutral term Bohemi without any attributive which prevailed in the Latin usage of church authorities. In contrast, what we intend to show is that appellations containing the component Bohemian sometimes opened the door to the generalization of the Bohemian people as heretics. Our examination is based uh, on the source text enclosed in the edition listed on the slide. So uh, you can see here Liber Cancellarie, Stanislaw Ciolaik, the correspondence of John of Capistrano, uh, also Acta Judiciorum, and uh, two corpora of Polish medieval Latin. Uh, it is a fontes and the corpus uh, of the works of uh, Jan Lugos. So we are aware of the fact uh, that the primary literature regarding the Hussite history is chosen by us for the purposes of this examination is very, very selective. As you can see, we focused on diplomatic and uh, juridical literature, since we believe that this most closely reflects the language currently used by the protagonist of the Hussite related affairs. In turn, we in a lesser degree took into account the text shaped artistically, such as the Chronicle of Jan Lugos, even if these also are of great importance for examining the history of the Hussite movement. Let's go to the example number one. It shows that even in case of such neutral at first glance phrase as heretici de Bohemia, it might not always be easy to determine whether this phrase denotes the group of the inhabitants of Bohemia in partitive sense as those being involved in heresy, or rather Bohemia as a place in which these heretics are active. The quotation is taken from the letter of Cardinal Oleshnitsky to the Pope Martin V. And Cardinal writes, 
Vestra sanctitas me hortatur ut ad extirpationem et subversionem hereticorum de bohemia. In fact, we don't know what Cardinal believes that the Pope expects from him as the result of the suggested insistence on the king, the liberation of Bohemia from heretics or the liberation of the Catholic world in more general sense from Bohemian heretics. As manifestation of the identifying Bohemia itself with heresy can also be viewed the words of Cardinal Brande dressed to the King Vladislaus Jagello. So in example number 2a, we read about heresies Bohemia, and uh, in example number 2b, we read about heretici Bohemia. The reader of both examples may have impression that it is the whole country, Bohemia as such, to be blamed for the growth of the Hussite heresy. Similar approach is even better visible in example number three, in which the words of the Pope Martin V are reported. Pro extirpatione errorum ad heresum quibus bohemi, etc. detinentur. This time, the generalization about the heresy refers to Bohemian people in collective sense. The same type of generalization about Bohemian people, this time manifesting in the allusion to their depraved minds, is represented by an unidentified Polish envoy to the Pope Martin. He addresses the Pope as follows. Scio corruptas bohemorum mentes vehementer erase. The texts we examined for the purposes of this presentation, one of the most uh, frequent phrases used to designate the heretics of the Hussite movement was the phrase bohemi heretici. From a syntactic point of view, it is interesting to know how the attributive relation between two words components of this phrase can be interpreted. Should they be treated according to the norm of the word order of Latin nominal phrase, bohemus as noun and hereticus as adjective respectively? Such interpretation seems to be suggested by the example five. Uh, the quotation is taken from the letter of the kings of Poland, Vladislaus and Hungary, Sigismundus, clarifying their position about the safe conduct pass for the Hussites in view of the negotiations to be held in Brno. When comparing the first and the second occurrences of the form Bohemorum, it is rather clear that this should be interpreted as noun accompanied by the attributive adjectives infidelium et hereticorum. An important proof of nominal sense of the bohemorum is constituted by the attributive adjective prefatus that in further part of the quotation seems to replace initial attributive hereticorum. Due to usually encountered word order of the Latin phrase, the converse interpretation of the phrase bohemi heretici, namely bohemus as adjective and hereticus as noun, rather should not be expected. Despite of these, we also find one utterance in which at the beginning and throughout the text, the complete phrase bohemius hereticus occurs, while in farther part of the text, the word hereticus is used singly and it occupies in the sentence the position of the noun as it is shown is in example six. This quotation, is taken from the letter of the Grand Duke of Lithuania, Vitoldus, brother of the King of Poland, Vladislaus Jagiełło, who complains before Pope Martin V that the regent of Bohemia, Duke Sigismund Koribut, kept the forces gathered by the King Vladislaus against, against the Czech heretics and came back to Czechia in hope of gaining the Bohemian throne. The participle form dictos, aforementioned before hereticos, unequivocally suggests that the latter was used as noun. However, the attributive relation between two discussed words 
also can be explained in terms of opposition, namely that they both are knowns. Assuming such interpretation, it is necessary to indicate which of two nouns takes the role of the modifier. It means is used attributively with regard to its phrase partner. Analogically to the nominal phrase occurring in classical Latin, such as Cicero orator, it is in the sequence Bohemus hereticus, the noun standing on the first place, which seems to modify the meaning of the noun standing in the second place, since hereticus, as well as orator, denote more general, whereas Bohemus and Cicero more specific entities. What we intended furthermore to show is that the unclear attributive relation between Bohemus and Hereticus might have reflected the strong identification which between Bohemian people and heretics was made by the foreign opponents of the Hussites. The fact itself that these both, both words were used either together as nominal phrase or singly or even interchangeably when denoting the Hussites, proves that they were perceived by the users of medieval Latin of the Hussite time period as almost synonymous designations. It is then interesting to ask about the idea of nation in the context of the Hussite movement. What do we effectively know about how important this idea was for both protagonists and opponents of this movement? National element clergy uh, got out in the context of Czech religious reformation at the end of the 14th and the beginning of the 15th centuries. Especially at the Prague University, the controversy around the doctrines of John Wycliffe sharpened tensions between Czech and foreign masters. On January 1409, King Wenceslaus edited the decree known as the Decree of Kutná Hora regulating the number of votes guaranteed to academics representing individual nationalities within the authorities of the Charles University. By the virtue of this decree, Czech academics were privileged. Consequently, the foreign masters and students, mainly those German ones, decided to massively leave Prague. Schmahel points out that they must have taken at that time prejudice against Czech reformists to the extent which made them to identify not only those reformists, but also the whole Czech nation with heretics. By the way, as early as 1408, some parsons of the Prague churches declared to be concerned by the fact that due to the Wycliffe's Bohemian people themselves were used to be named heretics, especially by Roman Quiria. Another factor contributing to generalization of Bohemian people as heretics was the linguistic one. Since the Czech reformists started to use Czech when predicating, they hardly could be understood by both their foreign supporters and opponents, again, mainly of German nationality. Consequently, the Hussite inevitably focused their message, even when discussing uh, universal Catholic topics on local Czech audience. Lastly, these were the Hussites who considered their confession as being common and official of Bohemian people. Such attitude caused that religious and ethnic factors overlapped in their discourse one with another. Okay, but back to linguistic arguments. The examples discussed until now were taken from the text written in greater part about the middle 1420s. One text was older as dated uh, to 1432. So it is justified to conclude that these texts reflect the discursive tendency which shaped itself in the first years after the Council of Constance. Against this background, it is interesting to ask if and is yes, how this tendency evolved in subsequent decades. In our overview of the Hussite related source text, let us move to the middle of the 15th century, namely to the correspondence of John of Capistrano, gathered in the recently edited volume encompassing his correspondence related to the history of Poland and Silesia. What should immediately be outlined 
is that the main correspondent of Capistrano is within the letters unified in this volume, Cardinal Zbigniew Oleśnicki. The anti hussite policy and rhetoric of Oleśnicki started as early as for, uh, 1420s as he was appointed the Bishop of Krakow. As time have, had passed, he became a very influential person on the court of the kings of Jagiellonian dynasty, especially of Władysław Jagiełło and his son Kazimir IV. Oleśnicki had not only determined for over three decades the policy of the Polish court towards the Hussites, but also exerted significant influence on language of anti-Hussite debate. The correspondence of Polish cardinal with John of Capistrano generally reveals the approach of the former towards the Hussite as observed in his previous letters, it means as focused on national aspect of the Hussite heresy. What is new here is that this becomes perhaps now yet more manifest as it is shown in following examples. First example seven, Oleśnicki clearly shows again that his concern about the Hussite heresy primarily concentrates on Bohemian people and in a lesser degree on doctrinal aspects. This understanding of the Hussite heresy in national categories here additionally manifests in the use of the noun gens, Bohemorum gens, and in pointing out the place which Bohemian people occupy within the Slavonic community. To be honest, the approach of Oleśnicki towards the Bohemian people is characterized by certain ambiguity. When indicating, the, indicating them as source of the heresy, he easily makes recourse to pejorative epithets. As uh, at other times, however, he even demonstrates certain respect and courtesy towards them as it is illustrated in the example seven by the adjective nobilis, slavorum pars nobilis. In further part of the same letter, Oleśnicki underlines linguistic affinity between Polish and Bohemian people and adds that it makes him concerned about the salvation of Bohemians as his own nation would here be in question. But shortly before, he makes some surprising remark about the intention of the anti hussite movement as viewed in historical perspective. The example eight. Oleśnicki encourages Capistrano to consider the efforts undertaken until, until now by international community to combat the Hussite heresy and makes allusion to the opinion of some undefined people equating Bohemian error, in other words, Bohemian heresy, with Bohemian nation itself. As uh, we can see, ut bohemorum error vel ut aliquibus assere replacuit natio del eretu. Uh, and uh, no matter at the moment who were those aliquibus, some who put forward such belief, what merits to be emphasized here is explicit identification between Bohemian heresy and Bohemian nation. It also proves that in the 15th century discourse regarding the Hussite movement, the reference to national element must have been perceived as something obvious. It is worth noting in uh, what concerns the correspondence between Cardinal Oleśnicki and John of Capistrano that the letter uses the term bohemus and is derivated in a significantly less evaluative manner than the former. Capistrano emphasizes as the goal of his mission into the Central Europe, uh, the abjuring of the Hussite heresies, and if he makes recourse to the term bohemus, this is by him used in a neutral sense. He writes, for instance, about uh, pardon, a recently undertaken bohemian business, causa bohemorum, or expected bohemian conversion, spes de bohemorum conversione. In contrast, uh, Oleśnicki in subsequent letters to Capistrano of 1452 and for, uh, 54 uses in addition the phrase heresis bohemica with clear pejorative connotation. 
Pavel Sokup's observation about certain discrepancy between the designations given to the Hussites by Korea and the local clergy seems to be confirmed here, namely that uh, in the designation used by local ecclesiastical representatives are sometimes characterized of pejorative connotation while those by Korea usually are neutral. All examples we have discussed until now were taken from the text belonging to the higher linguistic register, since these were letters and documents produced by the papal royal as well as eminent bishop chancelleries. Nevertheless, important testimonies regarding the usage of the Lexems, Bohemus, and Hereticus in the Hussite context are also provided by ecclesiastical documents of lower register and rank. We mean here uh, the ex of Polish diocesan courts, the Latin, of which can in any case be viewed as exquisite. Pavel Kras individuated within them few places which provide the most important, as we believe, arguments supporting the thesis about synonymous use of both examined lexemes. So in example number nine, we read, Dicevant sectam bohemorum ab ecclesia damnatam esse, and also dicevant se velamori in fide eadem bohemorum. And in uh, example number 10, we read Halios articulos bohemicales. What is striking in the example number nine and 10 is that the nominal or adjective attributive bohemorum or bohemicalis occupy in the phrases the place normally occupied by the adjective hereticus. It should be outlined that the phrases in which this replacement takes place, especially articuli heretici and secta heretica, by the way, this last one is also attested by Lugos, are not some occasional combinations of nouns and adjectives, but almost presence, typical expressions for inquisitional terminology. It is then unlikely uh, that either judges or scribes of the diocesan courts did not know them in, in quotation marks, correct version. It means with the adjective hereticus. If they decided to use uh, bohemicalis instead of hereticus, it's because they most likely used to interpret both adjectives insofar as the Hussite heresy was in question as synonymous. It's also possible that such usage reflected spoken language of Polish clergy, who in current talks about the Hussite infiltration may have more willingly made recourse to national labels. Well, and some conclusive remarks. Uh, in our examination, primarily oriented on linguistic arguments, we have considered various syntactic situations in which the phrases containing the components bohemus and or hereticus occurred. Not always clear attributive relation between these two lexemes, as well as their interchangeable usage, proved that they must have been to a certain degree perceived by the users of medieval Latin as synonymous designations of the Hussites. At extra grammatical level, our overview confirmed Sokup's thesis that local, secular, and ecclesiastical officials, in greater degree than the representatives of papal curia, were willing to use the appellations of the Hussite marked by pejorative connotation. In turn, contrary to Sokup, we have, ins we have insisted that the lexem Bohemian as occurring in these appellations cannot always be viewed as manifestation of neutral terminological choice, but in some cases should be interpreted as reflection of generalizing approach to Bohemian people in the context of the Hussite heresy. The strongest argument about the interpretation of the Hussite heresy in terms of national categories was delivered in our opinion by the records of Polish ecclesiastical courts in which the phrases containing attributive making reference to Bohemians were used instead of those making reference to heretics, which would rather be expected here. However, 
Whatever conclusions we propose, these should yet be confirmed with more data. We are aware of these best provided by electronic corpora of medieval Latin. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks.